best place to focus because it's got color and sharpness and detail that allows a student to not be too far off if they have to move in and out or get themselves positioned for a nice visualization. And finally, the last exercise we want them to do is we want them now to go back and use the infinite focal length lens, the red numbered lenses, have them go to their unique number. In my case, it's a four. Now, for this exam, remember, it's important to have them turn the light intensity down. Most of these modern scopes have lots of fiber optic intensity, and there's too much reflection if you leave the light all the way on. It's better to turn it down about halfway of its intensity. Unique number on, same exact positioning, only this time, if the patient indeed is staring at something straight ahead and horizontal, and if the examiner comes in relatively anterior, looking through the pupil, they will land right on the retina, and that's exactly what I was able to see. So and I'll, this, it's the exact same positioning here, patient looking ahead. And notice this time, since I'm not in your way, that when I have his retina in good focus, watch how close I am to have a good size of visual field. So right now, I can see Bill's disc and it's almost completely in my visual field. And I would bet, Bill, what would you say? About a, was I a couple of inches from your eye? Uh, at least, well, I thought you might have been closer than that. Maybe a little bit closer. So, and they generally have to be within two inches to actually have enough of a view of the disc to recognize it, to see it, or at least to see most of it in one visual field. So that's the long focal length exercise. Okay, to sum up then, remember, we want to be sure the students go through five steps uh, in their beginning use of the ophthalmoscope. The first is to be sure and appreciate the short focal length lenses that are usually denoted by the black or the green uh, color numbers on the lens meter. Uh, the second is their identification of the infinite focal length lens that fits the refractive power. These are usually denoted by a red number and that number will stick with them for many years. Uh, step three is to introduce them to ideal positioning which includes the patient's gaze, which should be straight ahead and horizontal, their own positioning, and in a way that allows them to get close, using their hands on the patient's head. And when they're looking in the right eye, they hold the instrument in the right hand, and the left eye, they use the instrument in the left hand. And then finally, the last two exercises have to do with using those two sets of lenses to observe a specific thing in the eye. For the short focal length lenses, we just simply like them to be able to observe the iris in nice, uh, sharp detail using a focal length of about 15 or 20 uh, on, the, on the lens meter. And then finally, for the infinite focal length lens, have them use your, their unique number to simply have the eye ready, the scope ready to actually observe something in the retina. Uh, with those five steps, they will have a nice introduction to the beginning use of the ophthalmoscope. Next, uh, I'm gonna do the ophthalmoscopic exam. I'm not gonna dim the lights here so that you can see what I'm doing, but while you're practicing this in your group, you may wanna dim the light enough so that the patient's pupils can dilate a little bit to make the exam easier. I'm gonna dial the light intensity down on my ophthalmoscope so that the patient's pupils will constrict a little bit less. And I'm gonna leave my glasses to the side. Uh, those of you who wear glasses may find it easier not to wear your glasses so that you can get your eye closer to the lens on the ophthalmoscope. Okay. Uh, if you can find something that's at about your eye level, perhaps uh, something right about there, mm -hmm. I'm going to have a light that's going to be kind of bright mm -hmm. in your eyes. Best you can just stare right past me. Okay. okay. Now, I'm going to use my left hand here to, uh, both for my own proprioception and to steady the patient's head. Also, that way, if I bump into something, I'm going to bump into my thumb uh, and not his eyebrow. And I'll get back here and check for his red reflex and then gradually come in. And if I'm about 15 degrees from the midline, I should come in right in on his optic disc. And I'm going to trace the vessels back towards the disc and then trace them out all four quadrants. Just look at the light just for a minute. Okay. And I then do the same thing with the other eye. 